It is most excellent. You stopping by on the weekend. I'm John Zadar. This is the weekend of January 26th, and you are watching On Top and Hot, where I like to share my due diligence with you on some hot OTC and penny stocks. I am a day trader, and that's primarily what I trade, stocks under five bucks, and you can find those on any market. Now, I'm not claiming to be bringing you the best of the best or the cream of the crop. There's too many stocks out there. I obviously can't cover them all, but they do meet my criteria of a hot penny stock. Have a hot chart, have a hot piece of news in that order. I don't like to do a lot of reading. It takes time. It takes me away from my charts, from my plays. So I like to look at charts. I can look at a lot of them in a little amount of time. And at a glance, I can tell you if one is hot. I can see volume coming in. I can see a turn on the charts and she's breaking out. I can see a long run just at a glance. Now I know where to spend my time reading. I'll go to that company's filings and press releases looking for a catalyst. When I find something that can ignite the chart or keep it burning, I've got myself a hot penny stock, and these are the sort of stocks I share with you each day. But it's up to you to do more due diligence, because obviously we can't do a deep dive in these small, <laughs> these short videos. They're not that short. Still, though, we can't do a deep dive. So, first stock we're going to take a look at is Sing. That's the way I'm going to pronounce it. Ticker C Y N. Sing. You can just presume, folks, that all these stocks that we're looking at have hot charts. That's how I find these companies in the first place. They've got a hot chart. I find a hot piece of news. I put it on the list of stocks to share with you. At the end of the day, I narrow it down to what I think is worthy of sharing with you. So back to CYN. CYN finished today at about 26 and a half cents. She was up almost 24% gains today. And she's on the major exchange, which comes with benefits. No transaction fees. Trading on the major exchanges are free. You can trade pre-market, after-market. Extra time to play outside. And there's just a lot more money, a lot more volume, and a lot more monitoring up on the major exchanges. A lot less BS. So what does Sing do? Well, we got no description here. And normally I would jump into a news press to get a text description. But you know what? A picture's worth a thousand words. So we are over here at the company's website, sing.com. And they tell us right here, the company builds autonomous industrial vehicles. Like you see at the bottom here, forklift, stock chaser, autonomous tugger. They tell us that these pieces of machine make intelligent real-time decisions, delivering materials to the right place at the right time, minimizing safety risks and boosting productivity by up to 33%. And down here, we do get some impressive numbers. 64% reduction in human labor costs. 64%. That's a huge savings there. That's money the company gets to keep. But those are also jobs that are being lost. The equipment seems to be real safe. I haven't seen any problems with accidents or anything anywhere. They say it has 360 3D vision, which means it can see all the way around it from floor to ceiling. And they tell us that they are receiving 33% increase in workplace efficiency. 33% folks, that is a huge number and that equates into either savings or profits. Either way, it's a great thing. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, nice. Seven times roughly her normal volume, a little less, jumping from 8.8 .8 million up to 56 million today. Share structure for the company. Not bad. We've got a share count here, outstanding of 41, let's call it 42 million. I don't know what the float is, but it's not going to be any higher than that. And believe me, 40 million is not a bad float at all. Financials for Sin. Are they making money? Ooh, did they just start making money? At the end of 2022, we had $262,000, not just 262. We got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. And they were in profit. This first money coming on the boards after three, four years. Quarterlies, uh, what have we got going on here? Well, this last quarter is a little disappointing, confusing. All the ones before, they were in hundreds of thousands of dollars from 200,000 up to almost 900,000. This last quarter, they were down to $25,000 and took a loss. It was the first loss that they took. 
That's interesting. Balance sheet for the company. Well, they got money in the bank, about $3.5 million. Got assets, $11.5 million. Oh, and look, just a wee bit of liabilities, $1.3 million. So this company does have profits for us to do. To, <laughs> to share amongst one another. We have stockholder equity of $10.2 million. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company, we've got some juicy filings over here, some SC13Gs. These are always good news. These are big investors coming in, buying a lot of shares, getting an actual percentage of the company. And sometimes just who is investing is the catalyst. No big names here. One of them is for about 5% of the company. The other one is for about 10% of the company. But it doesn't really matter who's investing. These are always good news. Taking a look at the news. We are going back here to the beginning of December when the company made a public offering for $5 million. Public offerings are the ones we don't really like because it increases the float. They put more shares on the market. This was about 33 million shares which means you probably have to still add those to the 41 million we just seen in the outstanding. Chances are that's not caught up yet. It could have, but I'm thinking not, I wouldn't presume. So it could be up to 75 million now outstanding, which isn't bad. Plus the company's got $5 million worth of working cash now. So they're in good position. At the beginning of January, the company told us they received their 18th U.S. patent in adaptive traffic rule-based decision-making for autonomous driving. And in this most recent piece of news here, we're going to take a look at over here rather than over at the OTC because we get a video here. I'll let you watch the video while I talk. Uh, they tell us over here that they now have 19 patents. They just got another one for Enterprise Autonomy Suite 9 and added auto unhitch capabilities to their industrial autonomous vehicles. So they tell us down here that Singh shared several company milestones and key achievements from 2023, including valuable deployments, sending the products out, paid projects with leading global customers, and key partnerships to propel their artificial intelligence and robotics technologies into even more complete solutions for customers. To, with these things together, their achievements are positioning Singh for a transformational 2024. Now, some of the bullets about what's been going on here. They had a paid pre-order agreement for Arauco for 100 drive mod forklifts, which is going to give them $5 million worth of reoccurring revenues year after year. The reason it's reoccurring is that they have to hook up software to these machines. They are thinking, they are AI controlled and they've got to be connected to the cloud. They also had some valuable deployments with the U.S. Continental California based manufacturer. They've got two partnerships they tell us about here that they created new vehicles for. One was with BYD, the other one is with Motrek. They also had some initial deployments with several big brands including from the Fortune 100. They're just starting business with these bigger companies. And here's the big news right now. They have changed their thinking for their machines. They've gotten rid of the Intel semiconductor processing chips, and they are now using NVIDIA's AI computer chips, which has changed the game completely for the company. So I think the company's got a hot product here. Lots of companies want to save money. They want to increase efficiency. This fits in there perfectly and it gets the job done easily without any hassle. And everybody's looking for that too. I think AI is going to take away a lot of jobs and it's going to make companies a lot more money. Let's go take a look at this chart. Let's take a look at Sing. We're going to do our charting for it and all my other stocks on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. So this is ticker CYN. We're looking at a one day, one year chart. And we've been here before. That's what those blue lines tell me. We were here March 13th and the price was roughly 95 cents. And five days later, she was at a buck 35. That's a solid 50% run right there. She did fall back down to the bottom of the channel that she was in then. And off of the bottom of that channel, she jumped right to the top of the channel, setting this high bubble of $1.52. And that was it for her climb. She not only fell out of the channel, she fell underneath the 200. 
She did give it a second heave hole, was looking strong up here for a little bit, and then fell under the 200 again, and she's been under there for months. We had a nice push right here for some reason I don't know of. Came down to this low bubble, and right now, look at all of this volume. Look at what we had back here. Nothing really, right? We had a strong poke there, and right now, every single day has been solid, and she is breaking out strong. And look at our oscillators on our one-year chart. Every single one of them is potent, pushing to the moon or on fire. I like the one-year chart. How about that six-month, four-hour view? Well, our high now is $1.37. We can see she likes to pounce, right? We got some big jumps here as she was coming downhill. This last one was at the beginning of December. She went from about $0.24 cents up to $0.60. Cents. You're looking at... Uh, 150% profit, 250% bounce, and she didn't do that just once. She did that twice. Came back down, hit this floor. Here comes our 200-day haul. She's respecting it. Look at her lay on it right there. She then got her balance, started floating, had one more down drop to the 200, tagged it with that low bubble, and launched. Touching the 200 haul was her launch. We saw that the other day as well, folks. Push through all the SMA, straight through the 200, and she is climbing on that nine-day SMA. And look at all the other SMAs. Perfectly combed out, curved, going across the 200. There's our first turbo boost, the golden cross of the 20 cross in the 200. Tomorrow, we'll see the 200 get crossed by the 50. That'll be another turbo boost. Oscillators are looking really good. Our PPO is climbing, our MACD is climbing, though it's pulling back a little bit right now. And our RSI is at 63. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. That's an interesting chart. Look at that 200. Right here was the end of her fall. Now, I'm not saying she went totally flat, but that is definitely decreasing her decline. She is still falling here, and right there she goes flat. And where is it breaking out, folks? Where did we see our pounce and jump and climb? Right when the 200 turn to go flat. That's when the moves are made 85, 90% of the time. I repeat this to you over and over again. That's how you can tell a hot chart. If the price is underneath the 200 that has just gotten close and it's leveling off, chances are she's going to break out. Now, if she's been underneath the 200 for a long time, well, that doesn't count. She's already showing. It's when the 200 initially gets close. That's when you look for the anticipation of a jump. And that's what we got here. She showed some enthusiasm here, intention here, came down like a cat getting ready to pounce. It crouched and then jumped. And it was serious about it. And there's been a lot of volatility. She's coming up and coming down hard, going way up and coming down hard. But she is sticking to the 20 and the 9-day SMA. The price is light and showing signs of wanting to climb. A lot of sideways activity here at the end of the day. A lot of it most of the day. She was going sideways. She may have gotten too far away from the 20-day SMA. She's way up there floating. The price can fl float but not fly. It has to always come back to these SMAs sooner or later. And you want it to be a soft touch so it can just bounce back off. And that's what this looks like it's doing. She went sideways waiting for the 20. Here it comes. She's stretching for it. Hopefully, she's going to tag it and start to climb again. Our oscillators. Our PPO is still showing signs of strength, though she's cooling off. Our MACD for the full day has been falling. And our RSI is under 55. It's at 53 right now. I don't like to see it under 55. And let's take a look at our five-day, five-minute. Well, that's not a bad looking chart there. We were on top of the 200, took that crouch down to the low bubble, and then pounced back up on top of the 200. Look, just a little bit of movement underneath the 200. Once it got on top, pew, big bounce. Fell quick, and it's just bouncing like crazy, like a cat on fire up a tin roof. And right now, she is leveling out. We've got to watch her. She could decide to come down some more here. And where would she come down to? Well, let's take a look at like our 30 minute. Ah, look, that's even a better picture, right? You can see what's going on there. She went sideways waiting for the 50. The 50 is cooled down. She's tagged it. There looks like there could be a bounce here, although the oscillators aren't saying that. I'm not going to hype this up. 
but I do like this company. The company's making more deals. They're making more products. They've added AI to their products, which now increases productivity, increases profit margins. This is good all the way around for everybody, except the people that had the jobs. I am not going to forget about them, folks. Those jobs are going to have to be created somewhere else because people have to work. I don't care how much AI can do. What can I still do to make a buck? So CYN, put it on your watch list, folks. Her chart's hot. She is worth a watch. Next stock we're looking at is a cannabis company, though they're getting into a lot more than just cannabis now. This is the American Cannabis Company, ticker AMMJ. She finished the day at roughly 1.4 cents, and she was up almost 13% today. She is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, where we start to get validated information because they have to audit their financials. The CPA must look at those numbers. That makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. And along with those validated numbers, we got validated information, the verified profile and the transfer agent. So they look real good. Plus, we've got that bonus, penny stock exempt. Now, the stock is near a penny. They're on the OTC market, but they are not considered a penny stock because they have been in business for three to five years, have had millions of dollars in assets or revenues all that time period, and they've kept up with their financials. In other words, they've proven to us they're not a startup company that's risky. They are responsible and reliable. So the company looks good. So what is American Cannabis Company about? Well, contrary to what you jump to automatically, they don't grow it. They do not touch the plant. The company sells soil. They sell these containers to grow your marijuana in the size of a uh, trailer on the back of a semi. They also have multi-tiered growing for inside so that you can make the absolute most of the little space that you have. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, big drop. My God, more than 75% drop in volume going from 1.3 million down to 286,000. Share structure for the company. Well, it looks like our outstanding share count is about 184 million. The insiders are holding about 69 million of those shares. We get all the rest, about 115 million. Average float. Market cap for the company, about 2.2 million. Looking at the financials for AMMJ, holy cow, what a big jump from 2021 to 2022. You're looking at it about eight times her normal revenues. The problem is it didn't carry over to the profits. We barely doubled our profits. Look at how much they paid for the money they generated there. Looking at our quarterlies, <laughs> we've been seeing this a lot right here, folks. The very last quarter of a year showing really strong revenues compared to all the other quarters. I don't think it has anything to do with selling products or services. I think they're tying up loose ends with other issues and it just makes it look like there were strong revenues. For 2023, the company did about 700,000 in the first quarter, 800,000 in the second quarter, and now we're down to 600,000 in the third quarter. But we are bringing home positive profits. Balance sheet for the company. Ooh, we don't have much money in the bank, do we? About $8,000. Total assets. 4.1 million and total liabilities less 2.8 million which gives us positive stockholder equity of 1.3 million not holding a bag disclosures for the company well this is where we start to get some insight to the catalyst this 8k here came out on the 1st of December it's a little old right the news for this filing actually came out in October this says that on November 30th, the company entered into a plan of merger with Hyperscale Nexus Holding Corporation. Now, this filing wasn't filed because of the merger. It was filed to extend the closing date of the merger. And they tell us here they are now pushing the date no further than June 30th of 2024. So what is Hyperscale Nexus Holdings about? Well, they tell us over here we operate a cloud infrastructure service for AI. 
Now, folks, I was talking about this maybe a year ago when we were talking about AI companies. And I was saying that AI generates a lot of data. Your everyday average servers aren't going to be able to keep up with all of this data. Obviously, they're going to be using clouds, but even the clouds aren't big enough for all the data that all these AIs are going to be generating. So they're going to have to create these super clouds, if you will, just for AI. That's what this company is doing. Now, they give us an idea of their focus down here, which is pretty broad. Uh, high performance computing, blockchain tech with governmental and industrial focus, artificial intelligence and machine learning, metaverse infrastructure, big data analytics, and the internet of things. They're going to have their fingers in everything, folks. Now, I did find that piece of news jumping around online. This came out October 27th. Cannabis company merges with GPU hosting company Hyperscale Nexus. The Colorado-based American cannabis company is merging with Hyperscale Nexus holding company, a business based around the NVIDIA H100 GPU. Hyperscale Nexus is a company that was formed just in July of last year. And it was October that they merged or they set up a merge with this company. Their company has a business model that is inspired by Rackspace, if you know anything about Rackspace. Should the deal go through, American Cannabis will become a subsidiary of Hyperscale Nexus. The deal is currently looking to be completed next month, which isn't the case now, right? We just read the most recent filing. And we will see a share exchange where for every 300 shares of American Cannabis stock, you'll get one share of Hypernexus. So there's your exchange rate. Once this merger is completed, whatever shares you have of American cannabis are going to be, well, I don't want to call it a reverse split, but they're going to be changed. They are going to be for every 300 American cannabis stock, you're going to get one share of hyperscale. And they do plan on bringing this up on the NASDAQ. I did read that as well. And I was reading down here that this company, even though they're brand new, have already got business going on. But of course, you can get into all of that with your own due diligence. So I see a lot happening here right now, but the filings are old. The news is old, but the chart is moving right now. Taking a look at a six-month, four-hour view for American Cannabis, ticker AMMJ. Between May and September, we really didn't have a whole lot going on. She was just kind of hanging around the 200. And then here in September, I've got to presume this is when the first bit of news came out that they were merging with the AI cloud company because she took off. She went from under two cents to over eight cents, an easy 400% rip right there. Then she started falling over the next few weeks, finally getting to the 200, wrestled with that for a week, came underneath, and now it's been virtually three months that she's been falling hitting this low here of 005 on January 16th. Now, the volume has just started coming back into the picture, got real strong during the sell-off here, but right on the other side of this low bubble, we see a investor sentiment change. That's what I'm thinking. Huge volume came in and the trend changed. She has crossed all of her SMAs floating on that nine day and pushing towards the 200. Every other SMA, the 200 hall, the 20 and the 50 are all turned up right now and starting to climb. Our oscillators looking good. Our PPO has been climbing for about five days. Our MACD has been climbing for over a week, has crossed the signal line. And our RSI is now bounce, bouncing off of the overbought. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Well, we see our 200-day SMA is going into a trend change right now. She broke out when it was still falling a little early. She came down, bounced on it, bounced on it, waiting for it to get flat. And right now, it's actually flat and she's already well above it. All of our SMAs are crossing the 200 right now. Those are all turbo packages, folks. This helps the price to rise. Oscillators show a lot of strength, but there has been some pullback off of that high bubble today. So everything looks like it's cooling off right now. Our RSI is as low as I want to see it. It is at that 55 right now. Five day, five minute. So we got a low bubble in this corner of 0075 and a high up here of 1.6 cents. 
So you're looking at a hundred percent run more than a hundred percent over the last five days. This one morning here, she jumped from double zero seven up to that's a hundred percent jump right there early in the morning. Here's another early morning bounce. That one went from uh, just over a penny. That's about a 50% jump right there. So she likes to bounce in the morning, not every morning, but we do see when she gets ahead of steam going, she likes to run. She is on an uptrend right now. She is hanging around her 20 and her nine day for the most part, and the 50 is her bottom line. We did have one tag on the 200 here, but it's pushed away from it. I think of this as a pillar. It went through all of these SMAs, including the 50, and then stabbed into the 200. Like you're building a bridge and you need it to stand steady. You put pillars deep into the ground so it can't move. That's what that kind of looks like to me. And seeing what happened afterwards, I think I was right. <laughs> the oscillators right now, they're all very cool. All of them are pulling down at this very moment. Now, we may be a bit early on this. That filing we looked at extending the date, that was December 1st. The news is from October and September. So why is it running now? I don't know. But you don't want to miss a hot chart. She is already starting to break out. And I'll be honest, a lot of these mergers run hard before the merger closes. And then when the merger closes, psh, it crashes. So now may be the perfect time to be putting AMMJ on your watch list. Can't get anything by you, can I? Yeah, I did change my clothes. It's a different day. Don't you change your clothes from day to day? Honestly, I love making videos on the weekends because I don't feel as rushed to get them done. Plus, I get more time to look at charts, which I like to do just for fun. And you should be happy I did because I found a hotter stock to share with you. This is SMX, Security Matters Public Limited, ticker SMX. Now her chart, I identified just like that. It is the hottest chart I look for, an atypical breakout. Price deep underneath the 200, the price is going sideways, the 200 is falling, and the two meet. And when they come together, the price breaks through the 200 and you get your breakout. Well, that's what happened Friday. She broke out. She jumped out over the 200 and came back down. So I ran over here looking for a catalyst. Well, I didn't see anything come out on Friday or Thursday or even last week. The most current catalyst I found was on January 12th. So why didn't she break out on the 12th? I don't know. Maybe she was waiting for the chart to set up. And it is big news. The news is about a multi-million dollar contract they got with a very big client. And it looks like this is just opening up the door for a lot of other very big clients to join on board. But what makes this news very, very hot, the company hasn't got any revenues. I can see no revenues for all the years going back. There's nothing. So this is a big deal. And then on top of that, I found an older piece of news maybe a month or two ago about a technology they've created that should revolutionize plastic recycling. It's kind of in the same line as carbon credits for companies that can eliminate carbon, cut down on carbon. They get carbon credits, which they get to sell to these carbon producing companies. So the companies doing good get paid for the good they're doing. Well, they are trying to create this technology with plastic recycling. Companies that recycle plastic are going to get a token that they can sell and make money with. So SMX finished today on Friday, just over 43 cents, and she smashed it with 83% gains. This is a hot penny stock on the major exchanges. She's on the NASDAQ. Now we've got an okay description here. SMX is the next generation solution to address the anti-counterfeit brand protection, client liability, and track and trace markets. But they give us just a little more information over here. SMX is a publicly traded company renowned for its pioneering technology in marking, tracking, measuring, and digital platform integration. SMX's solutions are designed to support businesses in their transition to a low carbon economy, offering end-to-end -end traceability and quality assurances across various sectors. And I don't think there's a sector they don't work in except maybe FinTech, you know, digital products, because they help companies protect their products like clothing. If you're making a shirt that has 30% recyclable materials, 
First off, they verify you're using 30% recyclable materials. They trace it all the way back. They follow that product forward to make sure it doesn't get counterfeited by somebody making an all polyester shirt saying it's got 30% recyclable materials in it. But they also work with the uh, aircraft industry, uh, semiconductors, verifying the materials so that you're getting the quality products that you want. So they do do a lot. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Looks like an explosion to me. About 13 times their normal volume, going from an average of 673,000 shares a day for the last 30 days to well over 10 million shares on Friday. That's a lot of blooming excitement, folks, when you consider she's only got 1 million shares outstanding. And that's not the float. The float is what's on the market. Now let's just make this easy. Let's say that they have a million shares on the market. They sold over 10 million yesterday, which means they had to sell every share on the market 10 times over in one day. Now what happens if half those people don't wanna let their shares go? They know it's gonna go up, so they're just hanging on to them. Supply and demand. You can get some serious runs out of micro float stocks just like you would out of a short squeeze. And the chart is set up for a run right now. Now the reason our outstanding share count is so low, they just did a reverse split back in August to get up over a dollar. And that was a one in 22. Current market cap for the company is under a half a million at 442,000. Financials for SMX, we got diddly on the annual and we got diddly on the quarterly there are no revenues to be talking about but that doesn't mean they don't have any money cash in the bank they got roughly 1.4 million dollars total assets a little over 11 million total liabilities a little more than 9 million which gives us positive stockholder equity of 2.1 million dollars for all of us investors to share taking a look at those disclosures Oh, we got lots of them and we ain't going through them all, I promise you. But I'm just going to open this up. This is when these filings came out. Look how many came out on the 26th, the 25th. I mean, we're all the way down here. All of these came out in January. And I'll be honest, a lot of these look like duplicates. But there may be a slight difference between one and the other that I didn't notice. But I did not go through all of them. But I do want to share a little bit of information here from these. First off. There's a bunch of them about their shares. You've got this one, issuance of 9.4 million shares. This is not a public offering. These are shares an insider has, and he wants to resell those shares. So they're going to sell them, but it isn't going to increase the float. I did see a filing that said they were going to put 1.4 million shares on the market. I do believe that was a public offering. That would increase the float. That would make our outstanding share count at uh, about 2.5 million. We're still in the low float zone. And then they've got a bunch of them for warrants. Lots of warrants. But it really isn't a lot of warrants. They've just broke them down hard. There's basically about 600,000 warrants. And warrants will dilute the stock way down the road. Three, four, five years. Every time you convert a warrant, it gives birth to a new share right then and there. So even when that's done, we're still going to only be at about 3 million shares if they don't have any public offerings between now and then. So nothing looks bad. There's just a lot going on. And the other piece of uh, information I need to share with you, they did it again. We're under a dollar. We're at 46 cents. And they've been under a dollar for too long as far as the NASDAQ is concerned from December 11th to January 25th. So they've been given a deadline. A deadline. If you don't get your price up over a dollar by July 24th of this year, you're going down to the OTC. Or you could do a reverse split. They ain't got enough shares to do a reverse split. So we really do need to get this price up over a dollar. And I say we because we're the only ones that can do it is the investors. All right, so let's go take a look at that news now. So I told you I had two pieces of news. One came out in November and one came out, as I said, on the 12th of January. Then, of course, we've got the news about the NASDAQ delinquency. So let's take a look at these two pieces of news. This one came out November 28th. SMX announces planned launch of world's first plastic cycle token. 
The company has planned the launch of a groundbreaking plastic cycle token scheduled for the second quarter of 2024. It is estimated that there is only about 9% of the plastic being recycled in the world, which is currently about a $40 billion market. So the company's putting together a team right now, smart team. They are collaborating a diverse array of partners and sponsors, each contributing distinct skills and expertise to create the plastic cycle token. This initiative is also expected to position the SMX plastic cycle token as a next generation alternative to carbon credits, creating a new paradigm in the impact ESG investment landscape. Each token is being designed to represent a quantifiable amount of recyclable plastic using SMX's technology to physically mark the plastics, potentially offering a tangible impact on the environmental circularity. SMX's technology can precisely, tangibly identify the origins and composition of raw materials in consumer products and packaging, promoting efficient recycling and reuse. It compromises a chemical marker, reader technology, and blockchain data storage, facilitating a global system for grading and certifying plastic recycled content. This could be very huge, folks. Plastic is a huge problem in America. It's a huge problem in the world. The market is wide open. And if you could give some incentive to companies to recycle instead of just being nice, I think that could change the market completely. And that other piece of news, this is the catalyst, folks. SMX secures $5 million contract with RI for NATO supply chain transparency. The company is pleased to announce a $5 million contract with RI Trading of New York. This project is spearheaded by the SMX team and it will deploy SMX's cutting edge technology to enhance supply chain transparency with respect to a NATO member state and with the expectation of expanding to further NATO member states. This new arrangement with RI Trading aims to set new standards in brand protection authentication, ethical sourcing, and origination, specifically for the fast-moving consumer goods sector, including beverages and pharmaceutical industries. SMX's innovative approach will enable NATO member states to ensure the integrity and transparency of their supply chains, reflecting the company's commitment to ethical business practices and technological innovation. NATO folks, you're talking about global logistics, that's what you're talking. You're moving stuff. You get your materials out of one country. It's being made in another country, being shipped to a third country. And you've got this company monitoring all the materials and where that is going ultimately. It's a great business, folks. And remember, the company hasn't made money in years. And we just got a $5 million contract. And this looks like it could be the first of many. Let's not count our chickens before they're hatched, but that's what they're saying as well. So I see a lot of potential here, not to mention all of this is on top of this super duper low float that we've got right now. Let's go take a look at this super duper hot chart. Taking a look at ticker SMX, this is a six month, four hour view. And I did promise you an atypical breakout chart that was in the midst of breakout. We're going to see that on the one hour chart picture perfect. Here we've got our six month view and we had a nice high about six months ago, $28 and 60 cents. And we're currently at 43 cents. She was over the 200. Then when she came under it, that was pretty much it. She fell hard and fast down to $3 and 40 cents here, dribbled sideways, waiting for the 200 or not. She did not make a breakout here Had a little bit of bumping around, but not much to talk about. We did have a nice spike here. Lots of volume came into the picture, big jump. This jump went from $1.37 up to $3.86. So you're looking at over 100% there. Came back down when she got under the 200, she fell fast and furious for the next few months, hitting a low on Thursday of 21 cents. From there, she has bounced around. Lots of volume came in on Friday, really pushed that price up and she is well over her 50 day SMA right now. Our oscillators have all turned the corner. Our PPO was falling down for many a days 
And here on Friday, she turned around. It looks like we have an imminent crossover going on right now. Our MACD is just crossing the signal line. Big green bars accumulating. And our RSI shot, look at that. Went from 35 up to 73 and then pulled back to 58. Lots of excitement here, folks. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Big drop, right? But that is a picture-perfect, atypical breakout chart. You got your price underneath the 200. Both of them are running parallel downhill with each other like a ski slope. Then you start to get a change on the arch of your 200. She starts getting close to the price, and that's when you'll get a temptation. Now, this happened pretty early. Normally, you'll get closer than that, but this is what you see. The two get close, and then all of a sudden, the price just jumps for it and goes. And what she wants to do is get on top and then get her footing again and then run. So you normally don't see the very first run be the one that rockets to the moon, but it sure shows a lot of initiative, right? We had a jump come down here from 22 cents up to 56 cents. Now that is a 150% move. She came back down and she is on top of everything, right? She's on top of the 200, the nine and everything else. Beautiful landing. If this was the Olympics, I'd be holding up a 10. And our oscillators, they're pretty strong. Our PPO is pushing up. It's cooled off a little bit, but even with this drop at the back half of the aftermarket hours, it did not pull that down. Our MACD has gone sideways. She isn't falling. She's just going sideways. And our RSI is now at 63. All of our SMAs look like they're all aligning now for the turnaround and the climb. It looks juicy to me. Let's check out our five day, five minute. So there's your downhill trend. There is our low bubble of 21 cents. We had a bounce off of that over the 200. She meangled with this for a bit. And then what? What time was that? 2.35 in the afternoon, she decides to launch. And this jumped, and I'm not quite sure what caused it to jump. I didn't see a fresh filing. I didn't see a piece of news that just came out, right? All we had was the NASDAQ notice. Dark catalyst? Really? You threatened to remove me from the major exchange and that's exciting to you? Whatever gets the ball rolling. Now it's at least going in the right direction, right? So we had a huge jump just before the bell. At the end of the day, she ended up falling all the way back down to 34, bouncing to 45, and right now she's back down here. She's got herself a little support right there. Let me grab my support line. And she seems to be sitting on that pretty firmly right there. Yeah, right? So she's at 35 cents. Now let's back this out. Uh, let's see where 35 cents lies up here. We've got a strong support right there at uh, 31 um 35 oh we do right here right there folks there's our 35 she is sitting right there right now right on the 200 our next one after this should probably be right around 42 after that one i'd be looking for about 49 and then up to yep 60 you can freeze frame that here let me blow that up for you right there she looks like she's in position to jump, folks. Right now, we're at 35. I can see her getting up over 42. She's already tagged that a couple times. She'll probably want to push to 50. She broke that and then fell back. So I would probably be looking for a sell point around here, 50. I'm not saying you have to sell everything. It's not a everything or nothing decision. Sell some. Scale out. Take some profits. Don't be doing the math how much profit you're going to be missing if you sell this. Just take profits and lower your risk. Lock in them gains. That's how real traders get ahead. So this is looking good to me, folks. SMX definitely belongs on your watch list for Monday. And don't forget about the other two. And you've got some time. It's still early enough to do your due diligence. You know I didn't cover everything, folks. And I'm not investing in these companies. Not with your money. <laughs> That's your job. So it's up to you to do the rest of the due diligence. But what we've looked at, it's exciting, right? Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.